the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt and praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one god of glory cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing it was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died and praise the Father praise the stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not fade by his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise you forever. 
Missing you all as I bring this message online today and not seeing all your lovely faces. I will be finishing with communion at the end of this message. What a time to be living in. Back in lockdown again and with the challenges associated with COVID and this global pandemic, the spreading of this disease and tragically the grief and loss of lives and many other day-to-day -day issues in just doing life. We are certainly in the last days, which have been prophesied about in the Word. But also, what a privilege and a challenge it is as a Christian living and navigating our lives through this time in a God-honouring way. We are also called to be witnesses to this lost, frightened and confused world. To be honest, I've been quite grieved at the negativity, division and strife that seems to be infiltrating many relationships right now, which is an open door to the enemy to have a field day with us if we allow it to. This has turned out to be way more than a virus or a pandemic. It's surrounded by evil. It has also brought about an uprising of rebellion, division, attack on our government and leaders, with everyone having an opinion on just about every front, with much confusion, and then the media riding on it as well. What on earth did we do before COVID? Lots. It's paramount to keep our focus on Jesus and his word to us, and to be led by the Holy Spirit daily. Jim's word to us last week was powerful and timely and it focused on Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. The know that I am God, the main theme of his message. It's so important to meditate on who God is and his absolute sovereignty as the great I am and his unchanging character and will for our lives. It's knowing him and his promises that keeps us steadfast in knowing who we are and how to walk in righteousness. The scriptures that have caught my attention lately, and I believe it is the Holy Spirit speaking, is the way the righteous are called to live in comparison to the wicked. And Psalm 37, 1-7 says, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. These scriptures mean total dependency and trust in the Lord and his faithfulness. Delighting in him, no matter what else is going on around us. I think that's very timely for now too. He alone is our righteousness. We are never righteous in our own goodness or works. When we have the revelation that we are made righteous because of what Jesus has done for us and it's in him alone that we are able to walk and live as he did in this world. We need to see ourselves and other believers through the righteousness of God, just as he sees us. I had a memory at this point in my message from our early days of being born again, which I believe is relevant it was about seven years after we were born again and when we began attending COC Church, or which is now INC. I had prophetic words from two different pastors at different times and places who couldn't have known what the other had said, saying the exact same thing that really spoke to me but also unsettled me a little at the same time. They both said identically, Do you know... What a godly man you have. Which at the time I thought I knew and didn't know quite how to interpret what they meant by it. I took on a little condemnation after the second time I received it. 
But one thing I knew, it had to be God speaking and he was making a point to me. I guess when we met at 15 and married young, we had literally grown up together. And as new Christians and for the journey we were embarking on in the future, I really needed to know what a godly man he was and to trust Jim in the big decisions we were making at the time. After 44 years of marriage and 26 years in, ma in ministry together, I definitely know it and am so blessed to have a godly husband. Through many ups and downs along the way, I know that I know now. God may be speaking to someone listening today to do with trusting your husband and making a big decision or some other issue as I felt strongly to share that. With all that's happening in our world at present, we so need to be walking in righteousness with our thoughts, our attitudes and our words. To those we can come in contact with as people are watching us and our responses as Christians. There is so much fear, anxiety, confusion, anger and division out there at present. And we can come under that too, if not on our guard or meditating on the word and what it says. Some more verses from Psalm 37. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the wicked, the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. These are his amazing promises to us in our assurance of our inheritance in him. Despite the things we face right now, we are called to walk with integrity, wisdom and in the fear of the Lord. We need to be responding in the opposite spirit to the world, which is supernatural. We cannot do it in our own strength, only by the Holy Spirit and his wisdom. The Apostle James puts it so well in his letter when he talks about heavenly wisdom versus the world's wisdom. He says demonic wisdom does not descend from above, but where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing dwell there, are there. I think we are seeing a lot of demonic influence being let loose in the world at present. James 3 and 17 and 18 from the Passion says, But the wisdom from above is always pure, filled with peace, considerate and teachable, it is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form and it always bears the beautiful harvest of righteousness. Good seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. There will be many opportunities for us to be peacemakers but without compromise and we will see need his wisdom to do that to show mercy and love we're able to from a pure heart, being genuine without hypocrisy, being considerate and with gentleness will speak volumes to others. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit which we all possess and need to release as we are led at every given opportunity. We are to do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith, Galatians 6.10 says. I believe it's a time as believers to care for and show love to one another and even more so at present. In this time of isolation, it's easy to pull back and not be as diligent, but we need to be creative and go out of our way to uplift and encourage one another. We all need each other, and which lockdown really makes us appreciate. 
We had recently commenced our Eat Talk Connect morning teas on a Wednesday morning to meet some new needs in our community, especially those who are lonely and just needing to come and have a, connect, a coffee and connect with others. But it's truly been just as much for those in our own church to come along and connect and chat. And there's been such a lovely atmosphere of care and love being shown where people can come and just be. As we love each other as Jesus commanded us to, we fulfil what he also said, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. That's what we want others who don't know Christ to see, that we are not religious people who just go to church, but that we are his disciples who show his love to one another and to everyone. Hebrews 10, 24 says we are to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We can't help not assembling together right now, but we can still exhort and encourage each other and the day is certainly approaching. Our love for others has to be real and genuine in showing the love of Christ. Ephesians 3, 17-19 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I had a bit of a revelation from this scripture and it is that because God is love, that it's only as we come to truly know his love, beyond knowledge, that we are truly filled with the fullness of God, because he is love. It's also a time to stand together in faith and to fight this battle that we are in spiritually. We don't have to look far to see what's behind this COVID virus and all that goes with it and the outcome the evil one wants to bring. I think the biggest weapons he is using at present is fear, division and strife. I'd like to share an Old Testament example as it has so many applications for some things we are facing right now and how different people responded to their circumstances. It's from Numbers 13 and 14. I know you've probably heard these passages of scripture many times but allow the Holy Spirit to speak and encourage you through it today. So the Lord spoke to Moses to send out commissioned leaders from the 12 tribes of Israel to spy out the land of Canaan, which they were going in to possess. They were to check out what the land was like, whether the people were few or many who inhabited it, whether they were weak or strong, whether the land was good or bad, or the cities were like camps or strongholds. And they were to be of good courage and to also bring back some of the fruit of the land. The Lord would use the spies' report as a test of Israel's faith. So they were gone 40 days spying out the land and returned with a huge cluster of grapes which two men had to carry on a pole between them because they were so big as well as pomegranates and figs. They brought back a report to the people of Israel. The land truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Just as the Lord had promised Moses previously, it was a good land. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak, a tribe of large men. The Amicalites dwell in the land of the south and all the other ites dwell in the mountains and by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. That word nevertheless changed everything about the report. It meant despite all of that. It's hard to imagine a report more unbelieving and unfaithful to God than this. A report that recognises the faithfulness of God's promise, the truth of his word and yet says despite all that. I love Caleb's faithful objection to the negative report, which took great courage to stand against the tide of unbelief and doubt. 
In verse 30, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with Caleb continued to bring a report of how many men there were who would devour them. They were literally giants, and how small the Israelites were in their own sight and the sight of the others, like grasshoppers in comparison. This unbelieving response was a potent combination of some truth, but all lies and exaggeration. Unbelief often presents itself as being factual or practical or down to earth. The most factual, practical and down to earth thing we can do is trust the word of the living God, the truth. After hearing the bad report, all of the Israelites just wanted to return to Egypt as they felt they would be killed anyway by the inhabitants of Canaan. And worst of all, they blamed God for bringing them to this place. Here is the response of Caleb and Joshua who had spied out the land with the other men. A totally different response to the congregation of Israel. Numbers 14, 7-9 says, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. They all saw the same sights in Canaan, the same giants, the same land, the same grapes, the same cities, but only two men came away singing in faith and the others filled with a sense of certain doom and hopelessness. There is so much we can take away from this passage as ultimately faith or unbelief do not spring from our circumstances but from our hearts which only God can change. Only Caleb and Joshua got to enter into the promised land the others all died after 40 years in the wilderness because of their unbelief and disobedience. Church, despite what we face now in our circumstances, we have to come together in faith in our God, and pray for our nation and, and our future generations. We have to keep our hearts and attitude, attitudes pure and walk in unity and righteousness despite the fear and negative reports out there. We are a powerful army who are on the winning side, whose king has already won the battle over the enemy on our behalf. We just have to trust his leading through the spirit and keep our eyes fixed on him. I'm going to just finish up this message with communion now. If you want to have your emblems there ready. It's God's heart that none should perish or go to an eternity without him. He has made the way through us, but for us through his incredible sacrifice to be in right relationship with him and with the Father and to be filled with his spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What an amazing saviour. What an amazing exchange that he took him, his sin upon himself and gave us his righteousness. The word says he's covered us in a robe of righteousness and his spirit he has given us to enable us to walk as he did. I'm just going to pray before we take the emblems this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your great love for us. Thank you that Jesus went to the cross on our behalf and that he took our sin upon himself and exchanged it for his righteousness, that we will be in right relationship with you, that we'll be able to walk as he did, that we'll be led by your Holy Spirit in these times, even Lord God. I pray for each one today, Lord, where fear and unbelief and doubt the things of the world would come at us, that we would stand strong as your church, as your people,
that we would walk in your righteousness. Lord, cleanse our hearts this morning. Cleanse our attitudes and our thoughts. Lord, make us like you. As your word says, Lord, we're being transformed from glory to glory, Lord, into your image. So thank you for your promises, Lord. Thank you that you will bring to completion the good work that you've begun in us. And thank you for the, the power of the cross. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the victory through his blood shed for us and his body that was broken for us. Lord, we partake today with faith and with peace, just knowing, Lord, that you have made us right before you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Take a knee and drink this morning. Thank you.